Welcome back. Well, we finally completed our draw knife project and posted that in yesterday's video. And I thought I would just catch you up to some of the other things that are in the works. I'm still working on that batch of hinges I showed you the other day. Four out of the five sets have gone out. Got one more set to finish. And then I'm on to this batch of about a dozen adzes and a couple of carving axes and try to get caught up on some of the backlog. Most of those are still from January and February, so I'm hoping to get some of those out and get down so my backlog is only through March. But we'll see what happens. We had discussed briefly this really nice hunk of wrought iron that Roy from Christ Centered Iron Works sent over. And what should I do with this? And boy, there were a lot of suggestions. That might be the number one most commented on video I've ever done. And lots of good suggestions. I'm not sure if there were any that were just absolutely silly or bad suggestions at all. So a lot of those things, even if we don't make it out of this piece of wrought iron, we might address out of some other material in the future. The number one suggested thing to make out of this was an axe or an adze. And that's a pretty attractive idea because these are the things I specialize in. And on some level, I feel like that's what I should do is make this into what represents my shop and my business and what it is I specialize in as a blacksmith. However, there were some very compelling arguments about why I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't say arguments, let's say opinions. Because nobody was really arguing. Nobody said, you have to do this, or why in the world would you do that? Yeah, there's none of that stuff. But there was some well thought out reasoning for why maybe I should challenge myself a little more. And when I originally presented this, I did say this is sort of like the blacksmith's challenge, where you start with a piece of material, and what can you make out of it? Well, I already know I could make these out of it, so maybe that really isn't much of a challenge and maybe I can challenge myself and do something that isn't what I do day in and day out. Now, I don't want to ruin this. I don't want to go so far out on a limb that I trash a hundred plus year old piece of wrought iron and make it useless scrap to haul off and be remade into car bumpers somewhere. So I want to do something that has a relatively high chance of success even though it is not my day in day out kind of work. Now one of the other suggestions that came up quite often was to make a scythe or a sickle. A uh, sickle is a small handheld tool, a scythe is a big tool that the Grim Reaper carries, typically used for mowing grass and hay long before machinery was around. And they're still practical today, people still use them. I own a couple of them and occasionally we'll take them out around here for trimming some of the tall grass and the lightweight brush. So a scythe is something that I really like the idea of, and I want to make one someday, but I haven't the slightest idea how to proceed with that. Scythes are very precise, in spite of seeming to be a simple tool, it's either done right and it works, or it's not done right and it's a waste of time. So I think this is not the piece of material to try and make a scythe out of. I think I need to research that, I need to practice that, probably practice it in mild steel and see if I can figure out exactly what to do with it. There'll be some tooling involved and the heat treating will be quite tricky because it's a very long, very thin blade. It'll be very easy to mess that up. So I don't think I'm going to make a scythe. That was one uh, Daniel Moss from Trust Me I'm a Blacksmith suggested. So I'm sorry Daniel, I think I'm going to pass on that this time. It's a good idea and he wasn't the only one that suggested it. Quite a few also suggested that, but I think it's it's going to have to wait until I have more time just to research and practice and do test pieces. So maybe over the winter, maybe next summer. It's not one I'm going to get to right away, but it is one I would like to do eventually. What did I decide to do? Well, another suggestion that was only made by a few people, but quite a few other people then agreed with it and commented or replied to their comments that they thought, oh yeah, that's a good idea. And that was a door knocker. Now, a simple door knocker would be a little bit boring, and I don't really want to do a simple door knocker. One of the more compelling discussions was actually centered around 
the possibility of a door knocker using a hammer and anvil. And as much as blacksmiths like hammers and anvils and ornamental things like that, I'm pretty sure it would never wind up on my house because it's just is not the style of the house we built. So I don't think I'm going to do a hammer and an anvil based door knocker. I will probably do something that is a little more classic, a little bit more gothic, but still a challenge, and that is a dragon door knocker. You don't see a lot of them, but there are enough of them out there that you know that they are not just a one-off sort of a thing that somebody did once. You do see them around, you do see old examples of it. I've got several books that show versions of that, and while I won't make one exactly out of one of the books, I will do some research, I will get inspired, and what we will have is a dragon's head that comes out the top of the, the door knocker, and the body of the dragon will be where the pivot is, and the tail of the dragon will be the part that swings out and knocks against the door. And we will try to get a back plate out of this, as well as the dragon, and we will need a rivet, and we will make the rivet out of this. I don't think I'll try to make screws or nails out of this, but I might if there's material still left over. Maybe we will try to make the fasteners so the entire piece comes out of this one bar of wrought iron. I hope that's a fun project. I hope it's interesting to watch. It will probably go on to three or four videos. I think there will probably be some tools I'll need to make. There will be a lot of time spent just refining the wrought iron into the sizes and shapes that I need. A back plate doesn't need to be made out of a one inch thick piece of wrought iron, so I'm going to need to reduce some of this to something like eighth by two, perhaps for a back plate. But I'll come up with an idea, I'll make a simple sketch, I'll share the sketch, figure out what tools we need. If we need to do practice pieces, we'll do practice pieces. So this may be one of those long-term projects that follows through the, the process of learning the techniques, tooling up, and then making the project. And I hope that's something people want to watch. I hope that stays within the uh, parameters of what Roy wanted me to do since it's going to be a fairly involved thing. This isn't going to be a one video project by any means. I hope it's not a 20 video project, but somewhere in between there, almost certainly, and it ought to be some fun. Now talking about the Axe and the Ads project, and one of the reasons I really like the idea, and one of the reasons I decided not to do it, comes from this little bit here. I think you guys can see that. This is the Master Mirror find from Gotland, and I, somewhere in Scandinavia. I don't know exactly where it is. Unfortunately, the book doesn't give you a very good map. But this was a Viking Age tool chest that was unearthed by a farmer in, I think, 1936. And the chest was intact enough that the tools were still in the chest. And it contained blacksmithing tools and woodworking tools. There are axes and adzes and hammers and things like that in here. And this is something that has intrigued me for many years. I don't know if you can see this up here. There's some of the axes and adzes at the top of the page. And a few of the other things that were in there. And I have thought for years that I would like to reproduce some of what was in that chest. It won't be exact museum quality reproductions because I don't get to hold the original item and see what it looks like. But there's enough information here that we can do something similar. And it's very tempting to do it out of this piece of wrought iron, but it is more tempting to start with the bloom we did when we did the bloomery project and refine it and then make tools that would have been made using bloomery iron. So very much an appropriate project for the bloomery iron, so I think that's where we're going to start this. And that'll be another long-term project. That won't be one that'll just happen overnight. We're going to have to refine the bloom, we're going to have to make steel, we're going to have to to make the tools, and then we'll see where we go from that. I doubt that I will ever make every tool that was in the tool chest, although there are other people out there who have, and it might be worth searching for them online if you want to see what other craftsmen have done it both in recreating the tool chest and recreating the contents of that chest. It's really quite spectacular. Uh, the book was originally published by Larson Publishing Company. They're no longer in business, but I think it's probably out there as a reprint. So give a look online and see if you can find one. It's, it's interesting. There's a lot of technical data, archaeological data. 
the documentation of exactly what the condition of the tools were and what the condition of the site was, all of that kind of stuff. So there, some of it is kind of dry reading, but there's enough information here to really inspire you if you are interested in these kinds of tools. So that is just a little update on where we're headed and what we're going to be doing in the near future. I'm going to try and work in some more small videos and do some more of the blacksmith challenge videos and do some things that are a little shorter and a little quicker. After a 50 minute video yesterday I'm ready to slack off just a little bit and do some simpler projects but then we're going to get back into stuff. I'm going to be researching this in my off hours and try and come up with a sketch of it and we'll share that and hopefully by the end of this week we'll be ready to at least start refining this into the size materials we need for the project. So as always, I hope that you have a chance in your day to get out to your shop, do a little bit of blacksmithing. I hope you can challenge yourself. I hope you can work on something you find pleasure in doing. But do do it safely and wear your safety glasses. We'll see you later.